First round of the NFL draft is this Thursday. All sorts of theories as to what the Carolina Panthers might do and might not do, and they've been very active to say the least. So to so to keep up with it all, I mean the man. The man to go to, none other than Joe Person. He's starting his fourth season covering the Panthers, working for the Athletic, and joins us now. And thanks a lot for taking some time out here. I mean, he's the absolute definitive source for all things Panthers, like I said. And uh, for me, right now, I got to ask you right off the top here, Joe. The Panthers have been very active in the free agency market. In your opinion, what was their biggest and best move thus far? You know, it's funny. For for all the moves they made, the one the kind of the biggest name was at a position I didn't really think that they had a need, but they went out and got Hassan Reddick, uh, edge rusher from the Cardinals, who had strong ties to Matt Rule from their days at Temple. Um, Reddick's a bit of a tweener. Um, he you know he's really kind of more of a stand up guy, but. Phil, uh, Phil Snow and Matt Rule, they kind of like those guys on defense. So, you know, that, like think about Jeremy Chin last year. He was a college safety, played all over in this defense, mostly outside linebackers. So Hassan Reddick is not like a Julius Peppers where he's going to put his, his hand in the ground for 50 snaps a game at, at defensive end in a 4-3. But he is a pretty dynamic pass rusher if you can find him the right matchups, which I think uh, it, it will be Phil Snow's uh, MO with him. Now, I have to ask the obvious question about the quarterback that they brought in, talking about Sam Darnold. How surprised were you that they went out and got him? And is he the long-term answer or just filling a, a slot in the short term until they can get somebody else in there? So, I wasn't terribly surprised just because they were so bound and determined to get a quarterback. And, of course, they were in on Matthew Stafford and, and got outbid. And and then, I mean, I truly believe they were one of the front runners for Deshaun Watson. But then his legal situation got sideways. And so looking back at it now, I mean, we were all kind of thinking about the draft. Well, they were quietly doing their homework and putting this deal together for Sam Darnold. And, you know, it's an interesting move. I mean, listen, he has not, we all know he has, was not successful in New York. He was the league's worst rated passer last year, but he also is only 23 years old. He is younger than Joe Burrow last year's number one pick. So my, I, my thought was take a chance on him and kind of see where it goes. And to your point, if it doesn't work out, then you can draft someone this year or next. You know that they're, they're going to just keep taking swings until they get the um, until they get the franchise quarterback deal correct. All right, looking ahead to the draft, the, the Panthers are picking eighth. You can get some great players with the eighth pick, or they can trade back. Is this a draft where they should go with what they get at eighth, or should trade back and and to try and get more picks and fill more holes, you know, down the roster? It's a great question, and really, Scott Fitter, uh, his Seattle background is such that they were the kings of the trade back. I mean, the Seahawks went eight years in a row before last year where they either traded back or traded out of the first round entirely. A little different situation because most of those Seahawks teams traditionally were picking like in the 20s or a couple years in the 30s, uh, those two Super Bowl seasons. So, you know, trading out of the top 10, you got to be careful. Scott Fitterer knows that. He's not going to he's not going to go down past like 15 or 16. He knows where the value is in this draft. I think I think there's a very real chance that it happens. It, it, but you got to find a trade partner. And uh, you know, there's always more teams wanting to trade back than to trade up just because the cost of it is being so high. The one team I would keep my eye on is fifth is uh, New England at 15. You know, they have Cam, of course, but if there's one of these quarterbacks that Bill Belichick might have fallen uh, and become enthralled for, they could be sitting there at eight when the Panthers pick, and the Panthers know that. And, and that's, again, back in that sweet, sweet spot where uh, Scott Fitter doesn't want to go past about 15. But I think you can get an extra first-round pick in that scenario for next year, 2022. And uh, I'll tell you, I'd be very, very tempted. I think I'd pull the trigger on that deal if I'm the Panthers. Time to put you on the spot. All right, here we go. Put your GM hat on for me here, my man. What do you think they are going to take? I mean, what are they going to do with that eighth pick? So I think they really do mean it when they say best player available. Here's the problem with that. 
the the guys that I'm looking at for best player available are like Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, um, maybe Panay Sewell. Uh, those guys I think are going to all be gone at eight. If any of those is still standing, even Jamar Chase, I take him. Even though, again, receive tackle and corner are the big positions for the Panthers. So, obviously, Jamar Chase is a wide out, but guess what? He's a wide out who was with uh, Joe Brady uh, and Joe Burrow at LSU. So, there's that connection. And I just, again, I think there's certain players. I mean, Kyle Pitts, like, I mean, turn on the tape of that guy. It's ridiculous. So, I, there's certain guys that if they happen to be there at eight, you turn the card in and you worry about getting that tackle uh, in round two. It's a deep tackle class. Having said that, if I, I think we can assume Sewell, Pitts, and Chase are off the board, then I think it comes down to a guy like Patrick Sertain, uh, the Alabama corner, uh, Rayshon Slater, the Northwestern tackle. Honestly, I think he looks like he could end up being a guard. I wouldn't take a top 10. I wouldn't take a guard in the top 10. So if they stay put, I'm looking at Patrick Sertain. Thank you very much, Joe. Joe, person of the athletic. If you